Pixel Math is Not Scary is kind of an ongoing series for me. I'd like to always take opportunities to show how Pixel Math works. And uh, I came across a really interesting one. There was on uh, a forum, on the Facebook Pixel Site for Beginners forum, a question. Someone wanted to make crosshairs to go on their images for whatever reason. Uh, I think the reason was they wanted to blink images and they wanted to compare where things were moving with respect to the center of the image and they wanted a little plus on their images so they could blink the images and see the center with regards to whatever it is that they were looking at in the data. So the question was, is there something in PixInsight that puts crosshairs right in the center of the frame? And the answer is not really. DBE kind of does. When you click on the image, you get a big crosshair that goes all the way across the image. But I think the intent was to make a little plus somewhere in the image, in this case in the center. And uh, Pixel Math will allow you to do that. And I'd like to show it because not only does it solve this particular problem, which is part of the reason I want to show this, in case you ever want to make your own crosshairs, you could just use the expression that I'm about to generate. But it's really a very good way to introduce how to use Pixel Math just um, just as a, uh, a great example or a lesson. And that's what I really want to take advantage of here. So let me begin by telling you uh, really the fundamentals as quickly as I can of how pixel math works. Pixel math visits every uh, pixel in an image. I mean, this applies to everything. Everything in PixInsight is basically a pixel math expression at some level. When you use a process, you have some expression or number of expressions, the functions or things, algorithms, things you're going to do every time you visit a pixel. In this case, let's uh, say we're going to put in the very simplest expression you can possibly do. That would be this, zero. Zero means visit every pixel in an image and make its value zero. Can't get simpler than that. Well, we don't have an image yet. If I were to drag this to an image and we had our destination here set to be replace the target image, that would make the target image black. It would visit every pixel in the target image and make it black. But I don't want to make my pretty pictures black. So I'm going to make a new image. And now I need to just specify. This is how you make a new image. But I'm going to specify in this new image maybe how big it is. It'll be a thousand by a thousand pixels. It'll be a color picture, which doesn't matter, and it'll also be a 16-bit image, which also really doesn't matter. But that's it. Now, what I can do is I can hit the little circle here, and it's going to create a black 1,000 by 1,000 image, like this. Now, right now, I'm going to do something else, because I am thinking ahead. I've already solved this problem, and I need to demonstrate something about the solution. I'm going to make another image, but it's going to be one pixel larger. One of the things about the solution to this problem is it does depend on the dimensions, the size of the image itself. If you want to put things in the center of the image, centers of images depend on their dimensions. And their dimensions depend, in this case, on whether there's an even or odd number of pixels. So I now have an even, uh, there's the even one, the even number of pixels are here. You'll see at the very bottom how it says it's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. And then we have an odd number, a thousand one by a thousand one uh, pixels across. Let me just demonstrate that if I change the expression to one, again, this is the very simplest thing you can do with, pixels, uh, with pixel math, is that I can visit every pixel in my image and make it the value one which of course is going to make it a white image, which is not very exciting. Now I will say replace target image, and that means replace the image that I point my little caret to, and that replaces it to uh, changes all the values to one, so change all the values to zero. It's really boring to do that. Let's do something a little more exciting. What I need to show you next is that pixel math relies on functions. Now if you've never used pixel math before, you couldn't necessarily know the functions. If you've maybe done some computer programming or things, you can make some pretty good guesses of what these functions are. But there are convenience functions in here, and you'll want to uh, you'll want to look at them. So let me show you that here we can go into the uh, expression, pixel math expression editor, 
and you can look basically at this is like the manual you can see all of the functions here and if you click on one you'll see it tells you what the function does and then of course there are also down below there are operators and these are all the standard operators from plus minus divide uh, some of the boolean operators which I'm going to be showing you which is like the ands and the ors uh, exclusions all of that kind of stuff greater than less than so on so that's where you find the the operators but the functions that's what I really want to show you here now I'm going to right now like when you do a recipe and you say you gotta have two eggs you gotta have butter you gotta have the flour and so on uh, that's going to be specific to the the thing that you're cooking or baking well I'm gonna be showing you right now the functions that we need to solve the problem so it's not all the functions but let me just point out the important ones the most important function we really need to know are the position so if we click on the X it says the current horizontal coordinate in integer pixels so that means when we use this X and we put two parentheses it tells us every time it visits a new pixel what X position it is at so it starts at 0 and then would go to 1 2 3 so on um, as as it marches across and rasters across the image it would go all the way to a thousand then Y would be incremented by 1 and then it will go in X position all the way to a thousand again and then Y gets incremented again and so on so we can get the X and Y positions by using this function X with parentheses and then y with parentheses that's how we know where we are another function that we'll need to know is if we're in the center so that's actually I use the word it's if we're in the center we do something we only want our crosshairs to be in the center so another function is an if statement so let me scroll up here and show you what that looks like the if here says that you have the condition that's the thing we're checking if we're in the center which we'll need to figure out how to do that in a moment um, then we have an expression or we have something that happens when it's true that's the second thing here there are three things and then the third thing is what happens when it's not true we need to specify that as well so we're going to have our conditional statement if in the center do something, draw a plus, and if you're not in the center, don't draw a plus. It's going to be a little more complicated than that, but that's basically the idea. Now, again, because we're working with an image, and we don't know in advance what size the image is going to be. If I'm making this expression to help this person on the Facebook forum, he hasn't told me how big his image is, and I don't want to specify you know, a particular size image. Hey, tell me how big your image is. This should work for any image. So one of the characteristics of an image that PixInsight will also tell you here is something at the bottom that are called symbol definitions. These come up whenever you talk about uh, many of these functions rely on characteristics of the image that we're working on. And one of the characteristics is the width and the height. So you'll see here that we can put pixels and things, but there's a width thing. So when we use this, we're actually getting back the answer what is the width of the the actual image in pixels and then there is also a height let's see there's a height here so you can think of it as a function but it's actually a definition because it is used as a variable um, by some of these other functions that are up above so we need to know that as well that is some of the information and I'll explain a few other things but you'll know where to find them now as I add them they are all in this section here uh, under syntax either they will be functions or operators in one case this width and height thing is a little special so the next thing I need to show you is that we can do uh, some of the fundamental operations here on an image other than just put zero and one here so we're going to do something a little bit fancier um, moving forward 